Dear international students, welcome. Welcome to FAU, the Friedrich Alexander University Erlangen Nürnberg. Welcome to the VISO, the School of Business, Economics and Society. My name is Roland Isma. I hold the chair for tax law and public law. And I'm the head of school of business, economics and society. In this capacity, I warmly welcome you. Thank you for your confidence in our school. Thank you for applying for the course and enrolling in a course at our school. The Friedrich Alexander University is not only the university with the longest name in Germany, it is a university with a long tradition of more than 275 years of excellent teaching and research. We're very strong in creating new ideas and turning them into patents and turning them into something practical. Let me also welcome you at our department. Our department has a strong tradition of interdisciplinary teaching and interdisciplinary research between the different disciplines of the social sciences as well as the humanities. We are a department of more than 6,000 students and we offer bachelor courses and master courses. We have now introduced two new all English bachelor courses. We have uh, a whole variety of master courses and we are very happy that you've chosen to join and enroll in one of our courses. I wish you all the best for your coming years here in Nuremberg. These are turbulent times, but turbulent times are also dynamic times, are times for upheaval, but also for generating new ideas and turning new ideas into reality. So we wish you all the best for your time here and use it wisely. And we are very much looking forward to discussing and developing ideas with you and of engaging in a constructive dialogue. Thank you, and I'm very much looking forward to meeting you in person or at least online. All the best. Hello and welcome to the winter semester 2020 at the School of Business, Economics and Society. Normally, we would all meet in person today, but unfortunately, this is not possible. The corona pandemic has changed all our lives and many things that seemed normal to us some months ago are now uncertain. In this very challenging situation, we are very proud that the winter semester at Viso will start as planned, however, in a different way. All at Viso have worked very hard in the last weeks to offer you nearly the entire study program in a digital form. All core courses and the majority of electives will take place. This is a great achievement we are very proud of. Please check regularly for the latest information on our homepages. And most importantly, register on Student for the courses you would like to take. This gives you access to all relevant materials and allows the lecturers to communicate with you. Of course, conducting lectures in a virtual form is not the same as lectures offered in a seminar room. Interaction will certainly be reduced and not everything will work perfectly at once. Your self-learning and self-organizing competencies will be required more than ever. While the long-term impacts of the corona pandemic are unclear, one thing is certain. Digital competencies will be more important in the future than ever. Our aim is to prepare you for this dramatically changing work environment as best as possible. Therefore, the digitalization of lectures in the winter semester 
will not be a one-time exception, but part of our overall teaching concept Visual Virtual. Please check the respective web page for more details. While we made a number of important decisions that shall provide you with the best study conditions possible, there are still many issues to be solved. We are aware that not all of you have state-of-the-art computer equipment and fast-speed internet connections. Some of you may be concerned about the risks of traveling to Nuremberg and others may face financial difficulties or problems with their residence status. Please trust us that we will find flexible solutions and be tolerant if not everything works out at once. The exceptional situation requires all of us to focus our resources. But you can be ensured that nobody will be left alone. And please also think about what you can do for your visa in the next month. Every kind of support will be greatly appreciated. Maybe we will look back in some years and say, yes, these were challenging times. But they also inspired us to find innovative and flexible solutions. And I really developed as a person. Isn't that what university is all about? I wish you all the best for your study at Wiesel in Nuremberg and take care. Hello and welcome to your start of studies at Wiesel Nuremberg. My name is Nele Leske and I'm your host for today. I'll have some really interesting and inspiring interviews for you with people who work, teach and study here as well as different services and institutions. And I guess you can make yourself comfortable because of the current circumstances worldwide. Um, you can't be here in person. So make yourself comfortable, grab yourself a favorite soda, some chips or popcorn or whatever you need to feel good. My interviews will take place via Zoom and because of Corona, we all had to improvise the last couple weeks. And so we hope you know we all give our very best and hope you will enjoy your first digital day of university. I'm really glad you're here and so just let's start. Internationality, open-minded and mobility in research and science, these are not just words. This is the mission um, WESO stands for. And that's why the international office is an important institution for WESO. And today I have Jörg Reisner um, <laughs> next to me. Uh, he is head of international office. And uh, yeah, what is the in international office responsible for? So we are, let's say, an advisory center for all kinds of international aspects, international mobility, incoming, outgoing. So we are here to help international students when they come to Nuremberg to orientate. We help them in their study issues, but also in the daily life. And our offer is concretely, we have every semester an introductory week where we help with formalities, we create networks, and we show them the most important highlights in Nuremberg. Then we uh, offer a cultural program during the semester with movie evenings, excursions, all that, of course, respecting the actual uh, situation. And we have a buddy system, so we offer them uh, buddies, that means volunteers, students who are already have experience in Nuremberg, and they help them at the with the first steps in their study life. Nice. And besides helping students uh, to find a university for studying abroad, do you have other programs? Yes, uh, the outgoing section, so the offers for going abroad are very wide. We have more than 120 partner universities and the whole selection process is organized by our office. Um, by the way, the most important event uh, this year is the International Day of the 10th of November, where we present all the programs. We have uh, external experts who talk about all these uh, issues, and we have a selection process until the mid of December. So I think everybody who wants to go abroad has great opportunities in, uh, here at the Wies. So. Uh, in what countries do we have our uh, partner partnerships? May, let's say almost all over the world, 70% um, of our partner universities are in Europe. So good old Europe is still a very important factor. But if you want to go to Latin America or to South Africa, to Japan, to Thailand, uh, Russia, there are many, many possibilities. 
if everything is possible and money is no consideration, where would you would be your next travel destination be? Well, my personal dream destination is really New Zealand, uh, offering a wonderful nature, but also interesting cultural aspects. And I also would like to go to Chile, of course, at the moment it's a little difficult, but uh, hopefully uh, the situation will change. What is important, I think, uh, that everybody stays open-minded, uh, interested to the world. So in our office, we have lots of books and uh, reports about different countries, intercultural learning, that's uh, the key word. And uh, at the end, it's important to keep your mind open because as we say in our uh, slogan, minds are like parachutes, they only function when open. <laughs> Thank you so much for this interview and you guys don't forget to mark in your notebook the 10th of November. Thank you very much, Herr Reisner, and um, yeah, have a great day. You too. Thank you. Yeah, welcome. I have an interview with Dr. Bianca Distler and Susanna Heinrich, the student advice at Wieso Nürnberg. And uh, you cleared the first hurdle. You decided what you like to study for the next three years. But what if you get a problem in those days or you realize you're not happy with your choice of study and you would like to change the subject? Um, expect for student counseling. Why do students come to your office and what are typical issues? Yeah, um, as student advisors, we basically advise, advise and help us all questions and problems in and around the study. Our motto is make the right decision. We also see ourselves as an interface to other institutions such as examination offices or student record office. And we have drop-in sessions, that means for general inquiries and individual consultation for more detailed inquiries or specific subjects. Ms. Mm -hmm. yeah. Heinrich, what is the easiest way, especially in these days, to get in touch or to contact you? Uh, the easiest way is to pick up your phone and, and call us, or you can send us an, an email. It's also possible to arrange an appointment via Zoom. All right. And uh, if you think about your desk, um, what is the first thing that comes up to your mind and why is it so typical for you as a person? Yeah, uh, when I think of it, every day is different because uh, at a large university like um, this university, a lot of communication is necessary so that all things can develop. And I see very um, males, many males and calls from and with engaged and motivated prospective students and student, uh, students whom we help. And we have some things um, that we uh, got from the students. Little reminder from the situation. And yeah, whoever noticed that things are getting out of hand, that a one-way street feeling is developing, should not um, shut himself off too much and should not brew too much, uh, but contact us and together we will find a solution. Ms. Heinrich, what is for you um, the passion or what, why do you love to work at the student's advice? What is your favorite thing you do at work? Yeah, as my colleague already mentioned, each day is different. So we have many surprises each day when we are coming to our office, virtual or in person. And um, what I like most that I meet many, many different people from different um, countries with different backgrounds and that makes it very very interesting so thank you guys so much for this interview um, i hope you have a great day take care and stay safe thank you so much thank you thank you here's the place to be except in times of corona um, economics and social science branch library in German, shortly VSZB. <laughs> and uh, I have a short interview with Stephanie Kolbe, head of the library. Hello. Hello. The library is not just a building, it's also available, available online, right? 
Um, that's right. Of course, we are a building and we are situated at Lange Gasse and uh, we have um, great opening hours. You can visit us um, from Monday to Saturday between 8 um, a.m. and midnight and on Sunday between um, 10 a.m. and midnight. But um, of course, we offer um, electronic books, e-journals and databases online um, and you can, yeah, you can read um, these books from your home. You just need to download the VPN class client on the pages of the um, RRZE, um, the local Rechenzentrum, yeah. Um, except, except for borrowing books, what else can I use the library for? Well, um, of course, you can um, use our photocopying and scanning facilities and our printing facilities. And um, we also offer a, a big reading room, of course. Um, at the moment, it's not so um, big. Therefore, you have to book um, a, a desk before you visit the library. This is possible um, at the library's website. There's a reservation tool. Right. Um, I remember my first day at the library and it was for me a little bit like a maze. Um, how can I get help for finding my way through the library? Okay, um, right. Oh, we have, of course, there's a team of the library and they, um, they are here at the desk or they can help you when you phone us or email us or use our... Um, our um, online um, contact um, service but of course we also have um, tutorials um, e-tutorials on the library's YouTube channel and um, yeah you can also um, take part in, um, in a training course we um, offer training on literature search and also a library use in general and yeah if you have any question please contact us and we are here to help you I have one more question. Um, since you're a librarian, do you say that? Anyway, what is your favorite book and why? <laughs> okay. Um, I do not have one favorite book. I have a number of favorite books. I like reading John Irving. I also like uh, reading fantasy and crime. I like um, Terry Pratchett very much with his disco world novels. And at the moment at home, I am reading Harry Potter with my um, son who is in third grade. <laughs> So, Mrs. Kolber, I thank you so much for our interview and um, I wish you a great day and please take care. Thank you. If you like to look over the rim of a teacup and love to learn beyond what this university is all about, and then you should go or get to know this man, Dr. Mario Österreicher. He's the head of Language Center. And now I'm getting a little bit nervous since I'm talking to an expert using my high school English back to 2004. So I go on and say what languages I'm able to learn at the language center. Well, there are a lot of languages one can learn. Um, for example, German is a foreign language. But only for those people, for those students who do not have German as a mother tongue. Um, so that does not count for any Franconian uh, speakers, unfortunately. Um, and, but for all students, we have, for example, Chinese, English, French, Italian, Spanish, um, Portuguese on offer. That's called the core languages. Those languages can be taken as part of the obligatory language module. And for those who'd like to take additional courses in languages, they can choose, for example, Turkish or even Russian. How does language learning and digitalization fit together? Well, for us, uh, the most important fact is uh, not to leave the learner alone. Mm -hmm. Digitalization does not mean that learning has to be asynchronous. So for our courses, the, the, the main aim is to have even a digital course with all the people on air, which means uh, you have all the people in your course, you can't look at them. So video conferencing is very, very important to us. And we try to emphasize not only, of course, on the written competences, but especially on the spoken ones. So we'd like to make our learners talk even if it's via the internet. 
And uh, that's the main part of language learning, as we think. Uh, all the other parts, um, writing, talking about grammar, that can easily be done uh, asynchronous. But talking, speaking to people, mm -hmm. having nonverbal communication elements, that's important. And that's what we emphasize on. And I think we did yeah. well, at least, uh, last term. And I hope we'll do as well as we did last term. Me too. Why is the combination of foreign language training, economics and social science so important? I, today, it's not only dealing with people uh, be, beyond the, the Nuremberg uh, town uh, front, uh, frontier to say. So it's not only talking to, to people in Alain and Food, but uh, we, we, we're acting globally. So acting means that we also talk on a global scale. Um, I do not want to get into any discussion on global English and international English and what English should we learn and what English should we talk. But the, 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 the main element is we need language competences, not only to talk to uh, our partners, but also to understand them on a linguistic and on a cultural level. And that's what can be learned in our courses. So it's not only to learn French, English, the language, to talk to the people, but really to understand where are the pitfalls, where do you have to, to be careful about, uh, what do you have to know about the other uh, person's cultural background, so that for me, and especially then for our company, I don't went, uh, it all goes smoothly uh, into new corporations, into new contracts. And that's why language learning is especially important with those subjects. Uh, everybody was asking me in high school, hey, how are you? And I was trying to explain, or what's up? And I was like trying to explain, but they were walking away. It was like, ah, since I realized, ah, there's just a question to be nice or, Except they're not really interested in well, how do you feel and they do not want to, to learn that you've been ill for uh, three weeks. No, forget about it. Uh, what they expect is, okay, I'm fine, thanks. Uh, fine and dandy, thanks. And that's it. After three months, I said, yeah, yeah, fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, to be honest, how many languages do you speak fluently? At least two. It's English and, and French. And German. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, most, almost. Uh, being a Franconian speaker, uh, it's pretty hard uh, to, to come up to the, the so-called German Hochlautung, so the RP in, in German. That, that's difficult. Um, but in, uh, for English and, and French, I think uh, we are quite a competent speaker. <laughs> so I have a last question for you. Uh, you said English is one of the global languages, but what language should we learn in, in a few of the, of the next 100 years? Well, a difficult question to answer. I mean, um, if we take into account the number of, of speakers, you should learn Chinese. Um, the question is, do we really get into business with all uh, the Chinese people? And um, do we really need to, to have a subtle competence of Chinese for, for getting into business with those people? Um, the other answer would be no. Um, taking uh, into account what's already going on, I'd say you can rely on English. Um, it is helpful to have a yeah, a sort of a first command of, of Chinese as an introductory Chinese uh, for, for greetings and to, to know really the, 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 the hard side of, of cultural backgrounds. But I wouldn't emphasize too much on, on Chinese. The same goes for, for Spanish. Yes, there are a lot of countries speaking uh, Spanish. Uh, Professor Gardini would be the best person to talk about. but do we really need so many people speaking Spanish? 
I don't think so. What I would recommend is to take the main route. So that would be have a very, very good command of English. And then to add one language you probably you've already had contact with or you, your company is working with or you're interested in. And that's it. That's really a great qualification. And this language can also be Hungarian, for example, maybe whatever. Yeah. So that, that's an additional competence that takes you out of all the, the main language ports and main, main language competences. But you do not refrain from learning English as really the global uh, language. And I do not think that this is going to change in the course of the next 100 years. Thank you so much for the interview, Dr. Österreicher. Um, it was a pleasure. Have My a nice pleasure. day and um, take care and stay safe. You too. Thanks a lot. Yes, my next interview is with Christian Nittel from IT Support Center Nürnberg. And when I think of IT support services, I think about the sitcom IT Crowd. Maybe some of you know the sitcom. What are typical questions people do ask you when they come to your office? This is very different. Um, on the one hand, they call us if some of our services is needed. This could be a mail address or the IT activation of a new employee. Um, on the other hand, of course, they call us if they have any kind of trouble with their computer. And how did your work change in the times of Corona or is there any change? At the beginning, there was a lot of extra effort. We supported the employees of the VSO um, in their home office. For us, that meant we had to help with a lot of computers uh, to go online on the wireless networks at home and to set up the private printers of the employees at their home office. So when and how can I get support from you? As an employee, you can call us anytime uh, or write an email, of course, if you have any technical, uh, technical issues. Um, no matter what, either we have the solution or we can help you to find the solution. As a student, you can come and visit us at our service desk in 0439, which you can also find on our homepage. And there we will help you with software support and any questions regarding our PC pools. And I have one last question. Name me one reason why you love your job. I think the main reason is because when the telephone rang, uh, telephone rings and I answer the phone, that I have no clue of what question comes up. Well, that was short. Thank you very much for this uh, interview. I hope you have a great day and please stay safe. Thank you. Same to you. Hi and welcome to the Information Desk. The idea of the Information Desk is that students help students and the guys who work there are all students themselves. Well, the Info Desk is the first contact point or let's say first ad for the students, but what are you actually helping for? The first aid is mostly for the first semesters. So they're mostly coming to us and looking for advice. And as we ourselves are students, we can give um, the advice from a first-hand perspective. So we've all been through the same problems and we can um, give specific advice. That's why the info desk exists basically, because a lot of people are, let's say, too shy to ask the questions which they uh, care to seem obvious. <laughs> all right. And why do you know all this information about the new rules on campus and research, assistant, jobs and events? Um, I, think we're well, I think we're very well informed as we have four people uh, working in the info desk, not simultaneously, but we check up all the sites. So um, we go to the official websites of the university and take the info. We take the info from the Facebook groups of uh, certain courses or certain interest groups, groups <laughs> put them all together, and then uh, we post it for the students. All right. Alina, um, you've been, you told me in the sixth semester, right? Um, yes. 
Do you remember your first time at the university and did you use the help or the information desk and what did you like about the most? Um, yes, of course, because obviously in the beginning you have so many questions, there's so much you have to think about. So I definitely went here and um, asked about courses, um, information I didn't have and where to inform myself. Yes. Tobias, what about you? How was your first semester with, or did you have the help desk as well? Um, I, I used it quite a lot, I have to say. Um, I went there and I asked them everything and they were always polite. So I think um, that's why I went there so often. Not because I had all those questions, but because it was so nice to, um, to have somebody that takes the edge, takes the fear when you study. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why you're working right now at the information desk, right? <laughs> yeah, because I, I always liked it. <laughs> <laughs> and how can I contact you guys in the times of Corona? Um, we're available via Zoom chat. Mm -hmm. Means that you, um, <laughs> which means that you can go online, type in uh, Viso or FAU Viso and Zoom or no, no, no. <laughs> you type in FAU Viso Infotake Infodesk and there will be a link, you click on that link and we're there for you. All right, from what time to what time? <laughs> 24 hours or from what time to what time are you there? It's open every day from 9.30 to 15.30 and on Fridays it's until 14.30. Right. So it's uh, the most frequented times. All right, then thank you study. guys. Thank you guys and uh, yeah, have a great day and stay healthy. <laughs> Thank you, you too. <laughs> Someday you'll ask yourself, what's next? And I guess one goal will be to find a good job. But how does a job interview work? And how can I present myself in front of a group? And why is storytelling so important? And the career service team will answer all of your questions related to find a job. But um, what's the career service all about? Yeah, thank you very much and welcome in the new semester and at, at the FIU. Um, yeah, as career service, we're responsible for the topics, applications and job entrance for students. And this means in particular that you can contact us if you want to apply for a job and need help, um, if you have problems to write an application or your CV. And yeah, if you need um, help during the job search, contacting some companies, for example. Michael Otto, you are the head of career service. Um, how can the career service help students to find a job? Um, yeah, we have three main topics where we help students to find a job. And um, the first um, topic is that we consult students. That means that you can contact us if you have some problems um, with the application and we help you and make an individual consulting where we work out solutions together. And um, that's our first um, topic we address. Um, and the second topic is that we have a broad um, seminar program um, where we help students with different courses um, to gain some competences that, which you need for application, for example. So, um, for example, how to um, behave in a job interview, um, in the assessment center, or some topics re re related to soft skills, um, for example, um, yeah, how to make a successful presentation. That's our second topic. And our third topic is um, yet yeah, to network between um, companies, between employers and students. Um, so we have our big um, event at the VISO, um, the Career Day. Um, it's each year in the summer term, in the summer semester. And the companies come to us in the, at the VISO and you can inform you about opportunity, opportunities at the companies, for example. And we also have some mentoring programs um, where students um, for example, um, give, give some internships uh, for students. Um, for example, our partnerships program, it's also in the summer, summer semester. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good question. good question. How can I contact you in these days of Corona? And do you have any online workshops? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the best way I think to contact us at the moment is uh, to write us an email at viso minus career minus service at fiu.de. And if you write us an email, we can make an individual appointment together. Um, if you want to inform you um, about our, um, yeah, our courses, for example, um, you can go to our homepage, 
um, or, you can, or you can follow us um, at Instagram. Um, we have also an Instagram account. And yeah, that's the better way, the ways to contact us at the moment. Great. I have a personal question. Maybe, you know, in a job interview, people sometimes ask um, sp spontaneous questions. And I got one for you. Um, if you could choose yourself a special power or superpower, superhero power, what would it be and why? Yeah, it's a very good question. And you should definitely be prepared if this question comes in the job interview. Um, yeah, it's difficult to answer. I think if I can choose um, one superpower, it would be time traveling. Um, because I think you can learn so much um, from the past and can avoid uh, mistakes, for example, um, for the future and can create a better future in this way. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, if you're interested in the courses, just uh, go to the career service and um, pimp your job interview. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, have a great day and stay healthy. Yes, thank you. Have also a great day. Yeah, my next interview is all about the power of gender and not just for women. Um, Steffi Haag is the Associate Gender Equality Officer. Um, sorry, Professor Haag. Um, actually, who, when and where can I get in contact with you and the Gender Equality Office? Um, yeah, thank you very much for having me here. So, um, yeah. Um, when you want to contact us, you can just uh, Google women's representative at uh, the University um, Erlangen Nuremberg and then you get our, on our, on our homepage to, um, yeah, to see our team, our activities, our funding opportunities and then you can contact us and when you should contact us. Uh, this is a, a good question. So. Um, we are here to foster the equality between men and women. So if female students, but also our uh, male students feel disadvantaged or uh, discriminated against or need some support or advice, then they can contact us. Um, we are also um, very open if they have suggestions how we can improve the situation of uh, primarily female students. and. Um, yeah, they can also get in contact with us um, to if they need support as student parents because we also collaborate closely with the um, faculties or universities uh, family service. You talked about founding or funding pro, uh, programs. What kind of support can I get from your office? Um, yeah, we have diverse um, funding opportunities. In particular here, we, um, our funding opportunities, um, we, in our funding opportunities, we strive to, primarily we strive to support research assistants, that is female doctoral candidates, and, but also female students that are at the end of their studies and want to pursue an academic career. Um, yeah, and for instance, we offer a mentoring program where we foster the career of women. We also offer diverse workshops for um, development soft, for develop soft skills and personal growth, or we um, foster, promote the participation in conferences by bearing the costs. And what are your next upcoming events in which women can participate? Uh, we will again organize several workshops next year. For instance, there's one um, about how you can master demanding conversations with confidence. And we also, um, uh, doctoral students in particular, can apply for our Faculty's Women Prize um, and where we award talented researchers. And um, yeah, so there are several other opportunities. Again, I would just recommend visit our website um, to have several, um, yeah, to have a, more details on our activities, on our um, funding opportunities. I have kind of a personal question for you. Um, what was your reason to become a woman's representative? Um, like, did you have any role models or what's the story behind? Um, actually, um, I have benefited a lot from the women's representatives in my own 
academic career so far. So for instance, um, I could participate in diverse conferences, mentoring programs. So altogether, um, I have built up a very great network of inspiring and supporting personalities. And they have offered me, um, uh, opened doors for me already. So um, when I was asked about one year ago, if I want to support the activities of the women's um, representative, I actually um, yeah, did not hesitate to give something back and also open doors for students and doctoral candidates now. Sounds great. Thank you very much for the interview and uh, have a great day. And of course, stay safe. You're welcome. Thank you. Student Services Erlang Nuremberg from the outside has probably already been seen by some of the students during the city tour. But the Studentenwerk has much more to offer than just taking care for the students' physical well-being. Uh, today, I have an interview with Sebastian Fischer, Communication and Social, social <laughs> Services. What is the student services responsible for? Yeah, we are responsible for the well-being of the students. That's our main goal. And uh, that also includes, of course, um, your food. The most obvious service uh, we offer is our cafeteria at the Lange Gasse. Um, but we also offer um, a broad spectrum of counseling services for all problems uh, you would encounter. And also we are responsible um, if you have problems with m uh, money, for example, you can go to us or also for all students that have children. It's a small percentage, but for them, uh, we have uh, three crashes um, with places for trials. When do I contact the student services and how at these times? At these times, um, we are reachable by phone or um, video calls. Um, you can go to our website, werkswelt.de. So I think it's, it's here <laughs> um, and just contact us directly um, or per email, of course. Um, we are always there for you, even uh, now in these uh, special times. What is the current situation regarding student housing? Um, when I start studying now and I don't have an apartment yet, can I get, still get in touch with you? You should, uh, definitely. Um, go to our website. Uh, we have an online application form. It's only, you can only do it online. Um, it takes about five minutes, so do it right now. It's our best advice for everything. Uh, exactly, right now. <laughs> um, and then uh, you will be offered a, um, accommodation, but not um, in the next few months, I guess, because in the winter semester, all our uh, play, um places or spots in the halls of residence are booked. So it will be take, a, take a while, but uh, you only get a, um, you get a accommodation if you apply online. So do it. All right, do it right now. So Mr. Fischer, I thank you so much for the interview. Uh, have a great day and uh, take care. Thanks so much. Let's talk about the fun side of being a student. Selina and Jan, you're responsible for all kind of events at the campus. For example, party. Uh, but this year it's a little bit different. Um, so to co-create the student social life at the university, how is it possible in times of Corona? Um, of course it's possible and it works. You just have to be a little inventive. It is not possible for us to plan parties or large events as is otherwise possible, like instead of the pandemic time. But however, we are doing our best to find an alternative here, like tonight's party. Um, it starts at 7 p.m. and yeah, be surprised. Uh, you're from Students Representation FSE or FSI Viso. Yeah. Um, how can I become a member of FSI? It's pretty easy. Like um, in your in your bag, um, you received a flyer from us, which, um, among other things, mentioned our first meeting with you and the 11th 11. And there will be a session especially for you on Zoom and uh, possibly also in person. Um, but uh, you will find more information about this um, on our social media channels on Instagram, uh, Facebook, FSEviso, or at our website, fseviso.de. 
in any case, in any case, everyone is uh, very welcome to come and um, yeah, create the university together with us. 11th of some November, that's the next date. You please write in your little notebook. <laughs> so what are the next upcoming events except for the 11th of November? Um, currently, we have a lot to do for you to make the start of the semester easier and uh, conform to the rules. For example, we were able to meet each other at the get together last week. Uh, on the other hand, the aforementioned party and many other events that are planned within uh, the arcas in the FSE. But we don't want to uh, reveal too much just yet. <laughs> okay. So um, how creative are you guys since the last seven months? So yeah, um, for example, in the summer term, uh, we wanted to do a party, but um, of Corona, we didn't have the opportunity to start a party. So we decided to do a digital party and we had the chance to cooperate with Red Bull. So Red Bull um, sent to all of the students who, take, who took part um, in a, at the digital party, a starter bag. And these starter bags, uh, you were able to find um, Red Bulls, uh, Red Cups to play beer pong. And it was a Zoom party. We had the opportunity to talk about everything and to chill and to drink together. Great, but you guys are not only partying, you're doing also hard political work. Is that true? And how does this look like? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Um, yeah, we at FSE consider many different ways of looking at students. On that one hand, we ensure that we can serve as a point of contact if you have problems, problems, um, complaints or other comments about the course of the faculty. And on the other hand, we also take care of these issues and those, those fulfill second purpose. We present you to the students in various committees, such as the faculty council, and then we met employees and professors of our faculty. Jan, since when are you a member of um, FSI and why? That rhymes and what rhymes is good. Um, I am part of the FSE since my first semester. So I met a few people that are from the FSE in my first semester, first day especially. And they said, hey, you can come to us, um, come watch our first meeting. And I went there and I liked it very much. Uh, like um, we can yeah, um, prepare and um, work together on, on problems. And um, like now I'm two years in it and uh, like, I still like it very much. Cool. I thank you guys so much for the interview. Um, I hope you have a great day. Take care and please stay safe. Thank, thank you. you. You are interested in university policy, then you should talk with Tobias and Linda about RCDS. Uh, what does RCDS stand for and what does it have to do with politics? So we're an uh, yeah, initiative for students. Um, we also participate in the university elections, but we also um, do a lot of fun activities for students like parties and like going around bars and speed dating. So we have several um, events in the year. Of course, due to Corona crisis, um, we can't really um, do it in like in real, but we have several um, offers um, on Zoom or Skype. Um, where we just um, try to get students together and um, have some fun here at, our, at the Rezo. Uh, what kind of events are coming up within the next weeks, Tobias? So it's a bit different because we can't do much uh, due to the coronavirus, like Linda said before, but um, next week on the 2nd of um, November, we are having a digital expo exposition where you can meet us and talk to us and get to know us and in the evening we've got some um, two Zoom rooms for you um, to party with us. We've got an acid escalation. So it's a semester opening freshman party um, where you can, where we have a DJ, where you can party a bit. And in the second room, we've, it's the acid Spielhalle. So you can play games with us like uh, Cards Against Humanity or um, drawing something or so. 
So second of uh, of November, right? Yes. So, so the Monday. Yes. Yeah, so write it down again in your notebook. Um, how can I? Excuse me. <clears throat> how can I be an active member of RCDS? So you have several options to contact us. We're um, on social media like Facebook, Instagram. We also have a website. So um, these are opportunities you can take and um, contact us or um, just like come up to us if you see us anywhere around the Viso, um, if you are there. So um, there are several options. Um, just feel free and talk to us because we're all, uh, always open to new people and um, we want to share our experience here um, with you. So um, yeah, you're also to keep you updated, like just follow us on social media and there you get the latest information and um, everything you need to know about the, your student life here. And you still have some spaces, right? Right behind your left for new pictures for us this is your um meeting room and they're all members on the wall right yeah um this is our um, meeting room here um just in the Viso, uh, <laughs> in the Viso. so um <laughs> uh, here we just um like hang and talk um of course now it's a little bit difficult but um these are all members um we do also fun activities um, private, so we just like meet and talk or just go to cities and um, have much fun. So um, there are a lot of pictures and a lot yet yeah, to make um, the LCS. Great. Um, you also organize events for the students, you said already. Um, what is your favorite event and why? Um, so for me, it's just um, like meeting people and talking to them. Um, I think it's really good to get to know new people and also the ones who are just like a little bit older. So they have the knowledge of how to um, prepare for exams and um, yeah, just what kind of um, lectures to take um, that's just really a benefit from the RCDS. Yeah, my uh, favorite event is the, the bar tour, the bar hopping, um, because I really like to go to bars uh, most people in Nuremberg don't know and to go, uh, so there are some bars in um, the basement also where you can drink your beer and nobody knows it and uh, yes, and you can meet a lot of new people. Our record with, uh, at bar hopping was uh, 100 people joining us and it was really fun. And I really like the stuff that you meet before and drink something and get warm with each other and could, uh, create a good network. Great. I thank you guys so much. Um, thank you for the interview. Have a great day and um, stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. you. You're welcome.